Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and we are on day number five of building this 15 by 20 koi pond with a waterfall. And if I had a full day and maybe one person helping, we could have this thing completely finished today. But that's not the case. I had to help my son move today. We still haven't got my daughter a new car, so I've been driving her around. It's supposed to rain this afternoon, and I have no help at all. So I'm going to do as much as I can today, and I may hold this footage back until I have another day to work on it and can completely finish this and, and make this the last video building the pond. Uh, we've got several things that I can start on right now, and I think the most important thing is filling in around this skimmer box. Because the only thing stopping us from filling the pond with water right now is that the skimmer is not connected to the liner, and I can't connect the skimmer to the liner till I pack dirt in around it so that that water isn't trying to push the, the liner into this void here. So the first thing I need to do is go get some dirt, and I've used up all the dirt we dug out of the pond just filling around the pond. So I've got some more dirt piles down there. We need to get that and pack in around this. Once that's done, the next task will be foaming in the waterfall. So let's get as much done as we can. So what we have right here is the skimmer box that sucks in water from the pond and returns it to the filter. And the height of this box basically determines water level for the entire pond because you want to maintain water level about an inch from the top of the intake and that allows anything that lands on the pond to be sucked into the skimmer. And an inch from the top of this right now is a little bit too high. We set the transit level at that point where we want water level to be and then checked it around the pond we're, we're going to be overflowing or almost overflowing over there and over here so really i need to remove about an inch of dirt from under this maybe two inches and then we need to pack in tight around it Leveling out this box has ended up being a lot more work than I thought it would be. But we are level now. Just gotta see if the height is still correct. So the lesson from this, or the takeaway for me, is if you get this box and that box set at the beginning like most people do, like I did, 
and you know what your water level is, pack that thing in and put some weight on it so it doesn't shift and move around and have a bunch of dirt fall in behind it because I made myself extra work that way. Now in this case, I would say it kind of worked out because we ended up needing to lower this a little bit, I think from even where we had it, once we saw what you know ground level was, or water level and ground level were gonna be around it. But ultimately what matters here is this is exactly where it needs to be, I think. I hope. So now we can go ahead and attach the liner to the front. And basically, we could go ahead and fill the whole pond, but we should probably wait. I've actually already got water running into it right now. Because last night I was washing the rock down here and suctioning it out with the sump pump to get our water clean. And when that finished its cycle, the water level was real low. So I'm just filling up the bottom portion, which will take about 30 minutes. It'll probably take five hours to fill the whole pond. And I may do that today. We'll wait and see. At this point, we've pulled the liners where it's straight across here and has no wrinkles, but left a little bit of slack underneath so that placing a rock here or having more water pressure or nothing like that can pull down on the liner and cause it to rip where we've installed it. So now we need to cut out the basic shape here. Okay. So I'm going to hold this up as a pattern and just scratch a line inside of it that I can still see after I remove this. The instructions for how to set up this filter box were inside the box and I left it out here and it got rained on. So the instructions are wet and ruined. And I could call the company and ask them how to do it, but I've watched other brands of this be installed and they all used a silicone. Mostly this was a flat plate on the other brands I've seen where this one isn't, but it looks like on this door right here, it's got a groove right here where you would put silicone. So I'm gonna put silicone in there, fill that up, but I'm also gonna put a little bit on here. I figure it can't hurt anything, right? This is 100% silicone, waterproof. Oh. There it goes. Ow, we got us hot. Just kind of keep the same amount of spacing on the edges and all the holes should hit it. One second. Check that, okay. Okay. Now 21 screws. Now these are long-winded screws. And I was thinking with the screw that long, why not, you know, run them in with a screwdriver bit? But actually it makes perfect sense to use this hand tool because you're only screwing in about three quarters of an inch of threads and it's such a coarse thread, it only takes a couple turns to be tight. Now that this is all sealed up, I need to keep packing in dirt on each side of the skimmer until it pushes dirt down here underneath it because I don't want to leave any kind of void, obviously. I guess before I get too carried away with packing in dirt, in front of it, which would just push the liner out. I'm gonna put some rocks right here, which just need to go, we need rocks here anyway, but that kind of keeps it from just swelling out this way. I don't want the liner under it to swell in or out. I don't want it under pressure, basically. That seems like that's a pretty good look to it. What do you guys think? Got this built up around it, but it's not gonna restrict water from going in between here and right into the skimmer. Like I said, we want water level right here, and we'll probably put something across here, maybe a fake rock or a fake log or something. Who knows, we'll see.
Okay, now that the skimmer box is closed in, we can literally fill this thing up. But I don't think we'll fill it all the way till we get the last of these rocks in, but we can fill it up high enough to wash the rock that we put down here. So I'm gonna trim the liner, get that excess liner out of here, then start dumping in bags of the river rock. Trying out a process tells you what's wrong with it. As I dump one bag in there, I can see that river rock's all gonna slide down into the bottom. So the pond drops down to a shelf that's about this high, and some of our rock is not quite as tall as the shelf. And that means that's all just gonna spill over. I need to put another ring inside there of small rock that sticks up above the shelf to hold that river rock in. So I guess that's what I need to be doing right now. I'm also gonna turn the sump back on and let it pull out some of that junk at the bottom while I'm finishing this rock ring. I actually shut the camera off because I thought I was going to place like 10 rocks down there and I ended up spending two hours building up that bottom ring taller and taller so it at least matches that ledge. And now that I've done that, we're ready to build that back wall. I'm going to wait on my help because I've got fish to pick up at the local farmer's co-op. I'm going to get some pond fish for the big pond. And that'll take me about an hour and a half. So I'll get a little break in. Then we got to fix this last stretch of wall. Then we're going to fill this sucker up tonight. It's going to be done tonight. So we just had a change of plans. I ordered catfish, grass carp, and bass. And I wanted bass that were a pound or more so they could be predators in my pond down there. And they said, well, we don't have any of those, but I was pretty sure she said that they had four to six inch bass. And I thought, well, four to six inch might at least survive and grow into the predators I want. And uh, when I got there, this is what I got. And then I looked at what I was charged. I was thinking, do I go up there and tell them this isn't what I wanted? But I looked at what I was charged and the price I paid was very clearly the price for these little bitty ones because I didn't pay very much for these fish. And I didn't want to spend any more. So I just took what I got and we're gonna now turn the koi pond into a grow out pond for these bass. 
and we're gonna I'm gonna do some research on what to feed them to get them to grow fast so that we can grow them out and get them into the big pond definitely need to put some good hiding spouts in there because about anything and everything can eat these with the other fish I took about 20 minutes per bag to acclimate the fish and just slowly mix pond water into their water but I'm not putting the bass into the koi pond tonight because that water's chlorinated and it's freezing cold right out of the garden hose so it needs at least a couple days or I need to go get some dechlorinator tomorrow but for right now I got distilled water and I'm gonna acclimate these bass to the distilled water and then I'm going to put an aerator in here with them and let them live in here at least until tomorrow so there I just put that much water in wait a couple minutes they just need time to adjust to the difference in pH and whatever other differences there might be in the water quality I dumped a couple of these gallons in next to them now I'll use at least a full gallon to acclimate and then we can release them Now that we've got the fish taken care of, all we've got to do is finish out the, the rock formation from here around to there, and uh, we can turn the filter on and let this thing run. I think we might redo the waterfall, but I think for tonight, I just want to get the water filtering so we can get those bass put in here. I'm going to mess because I don't want to step them closer. Stacking these rocks along the perimeter is hard work because the rocks are a lot heavier than they look, but it's really not that time consuming. We probably did this section here in about 30 minutes, and then we had seven more bags of the river rock to dump in, making it 25 total bags for the pond. So as I've been saying, today's my last day to work on this before taking three days to go to the homesteading expo. Now, I think water really should be a couple inches higher before we turn it on, but the sun just set, and I just want to see this thing pump water over the waterfall. Now, just so you know, the waterfall isn't even finished. We're actually going to kind of redo it, and we haven't put our foam in, so the water's not going to run down the top of the waterfall right. But I just want to see it function. We put in five days of pretty hard, consistent work on this and i just want to see it run so we're going to plug it in and see how it does you want to go ahead and plug it in gauge yes i do want to know how to turn it on and off where's it at so it's probably going to start off making some funky noise and taking a minute to actually get going because there's going to be air all through this system we put some water into the filter box and we put water in the skimmer box moment of truth moment of truth Boy, it really started sucking there. You can see the current pick up. Yep, it's right at the top. Oh, yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's actually working without the foam. Our waterfall's narrow. Yeah, I'm going to get bald right now. Tell her it's worth it. In the grand scheme of things, this isn't that amazing, but for when you've worked really hard on something, it just is very exciting. And actually, I was underestimating our waterfall. That's not bad. We'll take some time to think about if we want to redo this or not, but we might just shut it off, spray foam it the way you're supposed to, and leave it. It's not bad. It still needs, the whole pond needs some more work around it. We need some more rock to raise the top layer we need one more layer of rock and we need to foam under those and build up on the sides and dirt work and plant grass and there's still a lot of work to be done but that 
It's phenomenal. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.